Hi, uh, welcome to the session on uh, CMA part 2, Investment Decisions. Uh, in the previous sessions, we discussed about the calculation of initial investment. We used A plus B minus C formula. We also calculated the operating cash flows, operating cash inflows, that is profit before tax times 1 minus T plus depreciation. The operating cash flows can be uh, even means throughout the life of the project you will have uh, same cash flows same amount of cash flows or can be uneven as well like cash flows are different from each year you know each year to year discussed about uh, the payback period the calculation of payback period using even cash flows and uneven cash flows uh, the calculation of discounted payback period which considers the time value of money we even calculated NPV net present value using discounted cash flows uh, uneven and even we calculated the ranking method to select the projects which we call it as profitability index also we discussed when to accept a project when not to accept a project using different uh, techniques. In this session, we'll discuss about two other techniques which are IRR, internal rate of return, and uh, ARR, accounting rate of return, or average rate of return. Accounting rate of return is also known as average rate of return. So these two techniques are also very uh, 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 very much used in a um, capital budgeting evaluation investment evaluation let's begin with the internal rate of return what is internal rate of return in simple terms when you use a rate say for example 10 percent to discount the cash flows to discount your cash flows at this, if your NPV becomes zero, if NPV becomes zero, this rate is called as, this rate is called as internal rate of return. So in simple terms, at internal rate of return, at IRR, NPV becomes zero. Okay, so a rate at which when cash flows are discounted, discounted give us NPV a zero value then call this rate as you know internal rate of return how do you calculate internal rate of return same the way we calculated NPV the calculation methods remain same calculating the present values of cash flows during the life of the project and deducting cash flow at the beginning of the year. Now let's say, take one example here. So this is the example. Let's take this example wherein the initial investment is 200,000. Um, I have cash flows. The project life is five years. I have cash flows first year 50,000 second year 48, third year 53, fourth year 50, 64, and fifth year 68,200. I just did uh, some manipulation here to, to have this NPV zero, yeah? Let's assume that these are the cash flows. And the cost of capital is 12%. So we are discounting our cash flows using 12% discount factor. These are the time value factor collected from time value tables. And arrived at present values of cash flows by multiplying the present value factor with cash flows. And some of the present values of cash flows is 199,995. We are almost reaching the initial investment. So, not considering this $5, let us assume that this is zero. Now, our NPV is zero at 12%. When NPV becomes zero, recognize the PV factor, the present value factor, the cost of capital 
as IRR. So this project IRR is 12%. This project IRR is 12%. So there is nothing difference in the calculations um, of this IRR. In simple terms, calculate NPV, look for the result of NPV, NPV becomes zero, recognize the PV factor as, you know, cost of capital as IRR. So simple. There's no separate formula for that. A rate at which a project's NPV becomes zero, the rate is called as IRR. Yes. Now, we've got here 12% IRR. What does it mean? It is the break-even rate. It is the break-even rate where your cash flows, present values of cash flows are becoming almost equivalent to your, your initial investment. So what is the acceptance rule here? What is the acceptance rule? Once you calculate uh, IRR, your uh, uh, you know acceptance rule is if IRR, if IRR is greater than the required rate of return of the investor, accept the project. Accept the project if the calculated IRR is greater than the required IRR, required return of the investor. Yes, say for example, investor says, I have $200,000 with me. I will accept any project which gives me 10% return. $200,000, 10% return is a requirement. We discounted all these cash flows of, you know, a, a project which requires 200000 at 12% and NPV becomes zero. Now we uh, uh, we call this 12% as a IRR. Now just compare this IRR with the required rate of return of investor. Investor wanted 12, 10%. Okay, the IRR of the project is 12%. Go ahead, accept the project. One important term what you need to understand is the moment you compare the IRR with Investor's required rate of return. Investor required rate of return is also known as return or return on investment or cost of capital. You compared with this. Now see, investor is happy. Why? Because he wanted 10%. The project is giving a 12% return. He's happy. But he may feel risky. The project is risky. So he will increase the IRR here. Let's check at 14%. I want NPV 0 at 14%. I want NPV to be 0 at 15%. So the, the more riskier the project is, the, the IRR will be increased. Okay. Once you know that this 12% is IRR, then start increasing the required rate of return based on the risk involved in the project. And risk, the uh, risk. How do you find the risk? There are various risks involved in a, a project that we'll discuss in the further classes. Just whenever the risk increases, assume that the 12% is going to be 13% or 14%. When do you reject the project? When the calculated IRR, the calculated IRR from the, the, the uh, expected cash flows is less than Calculated IRR is 12%, which is less than the cost of capital of the investor. Investor wanted 14%, but the project is giving you an IRR of 12%. Reject the project. Because the, the, the investor is not ready to invest at 12%. When he wanted 14%, the project is giving us 12%. He says, why should I accept? I have an opportunity to earn at 14%. So simply the project is going to be rejected. 